also supervised learning and we're talking about classification so we we saw classification last time so if you remember guys these are um, our training samples the, um, the the blue dots can represent for example dogs the red dots are uh, cats and we have extracted two features so the features we extracted last time it was the shape of the ear and the size of the nose and we plotted the data and somehow very nicely we have picked a uh, very good features which uh, put basically these dots um, in two different parts of our uh, grid or space. So you can easily separate them by a nice uh, classifier line right there. Okay, so that's your linear classifier that uh, maximizes the distance or the margin between these two groups. So this is a classification problem. Classification is exactly similar to regression as I mentioned, but what you're mapping to is just a single discrete, but one, like two discrete values, like for example, minus one and plus one if it's binary classification. If it's a multi-class classification, you have multiple classes, then you're mapping into a set of discrete values. Now, let's look at this example right here. Now, this is a paper published in CVPR 2016, and this is one of the top uh, computer vision conferences. And what uh, the authors have worked on in this paper is learning to read your feelings by, uh, you know, learning to predict the feelings you might have when looking at each of these uh, artworks or these paintings. So the idea is giving a special, like a, giving a data point right here, like for example, this image. What I want to do, I want to learn uh, to predict whether it elicits in the viewer a negative feeling or a positive feeling. Okay, so you can look at this problem the way I framed it right now as a classification problem. Now, what I would like you to uh, do is look at those and think about which pictures elicit uh, positive feelings uh, in you and negative feelings. So I'm just gonna give you two seconds and then I'll ask uh, you questions. So, for this one, uh, let's maybe use nice crosses. For this one, who thinks it's a uh, positive? Raise your hand. Uh, this one? Okay, cool. Now I'm going to do psychological tests. All right, so who thinks that this one is uh, negative? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay, so who thinks that this one is positive? Oh, very good. Classification. Right, so who thinks that this one is a negative? Okay. So I think you guys, if I trained on you, you will completely ruin the model. So, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, here, all these uh, the images on uh, the images on the on the right, they are all they're negative. Okay, so these you have eight uh, paintings, and those on uh, the left, they are positive. However. The classifier, or the, the model, let's call it, it made a few mistakes. So, so those, the images that were outlined, that are outlined in pink, are misclassified, which means this should be negative, this should be um, positive somehow, right? And this should be positive, okay? So you can see that sometimes uh, you look at, uh, you, you can create different problems using machine learning, like things you never thought about. So this is a paper, if you would like to have a look at it and see how machine learning works. So it says, recognizing um, emotions from abstract paintings using nonlinear matrix completion. So this is the method that they use. And how did they get their work published? Because they used a, um, uh, like these data sets and they benchmarked against different other machine learning methods. So you can see you have all these, you know, methods that they have used and uh, right here they got better results that they highlighted in bold. So 
interestingly, you can see there is um, this, you know, the LMC paper has quite close uh, performance still, a 1% increase is uh, meaningful in classification generally because uh, that, that helps you better improve, like even a minimal increase of 1%, it can, um, it might be meaningful in terms of, you know, 1%, um, uh, it decreases your mistakes. So the, the less mistake you're making, the more confident you are. So when you're doing, maybe in paintings, it's not very, very critical, but in medical applications, a 1% can save a life. Okay, so it's, it's very important. And in other cases, of course. Uh, so here, how can we do that? So if we want to transform uh, these images into a classification, just a classification problem. So we have our data samples. So what are the features, guys, that we can uh, extract from those paintings to classify them? So I want you to think about two possible features. So we have feature one. Um, yes, good. And what else? And second feature. Actually, that's what they use in their program. Color. Like color and something else. Maybe you can think about shape. Very good. Shape. Shape, maybe we can think more about sharpness, if we can quantify it. Okay. So, for example, if we look at uh, those images, the dark ones, so this one would be, where would we put it? It will be less colorful, so here, uh, and uh, quite not too sharp, so maybe around there, okay? So let's, let me use another, a different color. Sorry, feature color represents a number of different colors? So color, colorfulness, maybe, colorfulness. How many colors do you have? Like, is it too colorful or least colorful? Okay. And then if we look at this one, so you can see it's maybe sharp and it has, uh, it's uh, not very colorful, but sharpness is like a bit sharper right there. So you can see, like, if you map all these data points on your, on your feature uh, map or feature grid, you can have some nice uh, classification. So this one maybe goes right there. So it's like, um, colorful but uh, has some sharp sharpness in it and if we look at the other side so this one is too colorful so right there with some sharpness this one is like no not sharp but too colorful so right here and then you can see if we keep doing this right we will have a very nice distribution of the points around there and then the other ones the other ones sorry will just group on this side of the grid. So then if we want to classify, we can easily, oops, that's nonlinear, so I want it to be linear, linearly separate them, okay? Now, what I would like you to think about during this um, module, right, machine learning, is when you're exploring and reading papers, and I'm gonna give, give you a few papers to read during your projects, especially the paper you'll base your work on, is, um, understanding the why, like why we are solving this problem. So you might have a problem in mind to solve, but when you're writing your report, you need to convince me that your model is very meaningful, is very important. I want to get motivated to read it and know about it and know the solution you're presenting. This is very important. So when you're coming to me to explain your projects, you better have a good story, okay? So what I would like you to do right now is read this, okay, and extract uh, arguments where the, the, authors tries, uh, the authors try to convince us that this is a very interesting problem to solve and why it is important and how can we apply it to explore other things or other problems, okay? So I have a read of this. I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not going to read it for you, but also think about the input variables <laughs> and also the output variables, okay?
Uh, zoom more. All right, yeah. So great. So uh, what do you guys think? So any thoughts to share about this? It's very nicely written, right? So you can see sometimes you can write with punch, right? The way they're 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 writing, it's 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 really cool. So in other ways, they say it's it's cr crucial and even more intriguing to to uh, design vision-based learning mo models able to exploit this link between the input and the output. So you can see these nice sentences, these nice ways of putting things together are very important when you're selling your product or when you're writing your research papers, okay? So, right, so what I highlighted here is two things that are quite similar. So what they're doing is trying to predict and study, uh, the re predicting is basically studying, they're figuring out the relationship between the input and the output, right? Once you model that, you can predict. And then the inputs are the visual features, right here are the painting and what the output is the evoked emotions by the painting 